Okay, so if you want to look at the unboxing, I've attached a link up here. That unboxing also shows the unboxing of the phones, some of the cases, the iPad mini, and even the iPad 9th generation. So have a look at that. But today, I want to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13. And I want to highlight the key differences so that you can decide for yourself, is it really worth that $350 difference to go for iPhone 13 Pro or you could save your money and get the 13 instead. Okay, let's start off with the camera on the iPhone 13. You can see the main obvious change that the I'm sure most of you will know is that there is a telephoto lens on the 13 Pro. Right? So the 13 doesn't have that. And in addition to that, not only is there an additional telephoto, the ultra wide sensor in the 13 Pro has been upgraded to have an aperture of f1.8 which means to say it can perform better in low light condition and that is something that well if you are likely to shoot a lot in dark situations or you just want a faster aperture to capture sharper images then definitely the 13 pro will be something that you should consider instead of the 13 itself but that said, right, the wide cameras for all 13 models, as I mentioned in my video before, I'll attach a link, you can have a look at that, is that they will all have sensor shift optical image stabilization, which means to say, in low light condition or in any such situation, you will try to produce more stable photos or videos. So that is a very helpful addition. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the lenses. It only comes with the wide camera for all. Well, but it means to say that if you have the iPhone 13 mini, then you also have that function of having a good stabilized ability to shoot videos. Okay, so that is something to consider. In terms of the look of the phone, basically the iPhone 13 comes with surgical grade stainless steel. I'm not sure if you can see all the fingerprints that I have on it, but it tends to get that a lot even for my iPhone 12 Pro. So that is one thing that if you do not use a case, you tend to smudge up the sides with a lot of uh, fingerprints. But I really like the stainless steel look, so I will definitely go for the Pro over that. And it's obviously heavier than the uh, iPhone 13 because the iPhone 13 comes with aluminium frames and sides. So definitely you will not feel the heft as the 13 Pro. So other, the physical differences will be that and of course the camera bumps and the addition of the telephoto lens. The screen is largely unchanged but the 13 Pro now comes at 1000 nits instead of 800 nits on the iPhone 13. In addition to the camera system, the iPhone 13 Pro also comes with LiDAR which enables you to do night mode portraits or basically giving you faster autofocus in low light conditions which the iPhone 13 still does not have that. The battery life in the iPhone 13 is now also better. I think it gives about 3 more hours. Let's say you can do video playback uh, for about 22 hours versus 19 hours on the iPhone 13. So better battery life is expected if you are getting the 13 Pro. So if this battery life is something you want, you want to consider, then of course the Pro models will get you better life. And again on the screen, the key difference that now that Pro models come with 120Hz Pro Motion display and it's an adaptive type means that if you are not really utilizing all the refresh rate, it can be throttled down to as low as 10Hz then if they need the smooth scrolling, for example, if you are scrolling two pages or if you are playing some games which requires or you know will benefit from the high refresh rate, then it will just adaptively go up to 120 hertz and then when you don't need it will step down and this definitely helps in uh, controlling the battery life of the phone and finally let's talk about cinematic mode 
Okay, so the whole excitement about the 13 Pro or the 13, the entire series is actually all about the cinematic mode, which is actually a smart computational photography by Apple that allows you to shoot videos with a shallow depth of field, just like what the Sony A7C here can shoot. So, and you can also do rack focusing. I'll try to show that out in a video that I'm going to do straight on the phone. So, how do we first get to the cinematic mode? So, this is the very first time I'm going to be doing this, and I'm going to show it to you. So, you just open the camera app. Uh, of course, you have photographic styles, but just start swiping to cinematic video. Okay, and we click on continue. And that's where we start to see the video effects. But let me just try to go outside and shoot the video in cinematic mode and see how it's like. Okay, now we have cinematic mode enabled and I'm going to switch to the camera on the phone. And let's, if I say I were to look away, and does it focus onto you? It's still on me? It's still on you. Oh, it's supposed to focus on her. Let's see, does it? Okay, because I'm not looking. Oh, now it's on me. Uh, now it focuses on her. Because but I as I look back, it focuses right back to my focus again. So that's cinematic mode. Okay, now we've, uh, we're trying out the fun facing camera mode. And let's look at how the camera will perform. Yeah, let's look at Look towards mommy. Why is it not face? It's supposed to automatically show. Oh, maybe it's too far. Okay, look here, Seth. And now, look at mommy. Still focusing on Seth. Oh, now it, is. it takes a while to pick up. But if I were to keep it... What was that, <laughs> Seth? Your life! Seth. Okay, that was... Uh, oh my god. I'm sorry. That's a bad one. But that's wreck. Oh my oh gosh! That's... Uh, Okay, sorry about that incident earlier. That was uh, um, just just caught us out by surprise. We almost died in there. But okay. Anyway, other than the the slow focusing of the the rack focusing system of the cinematic mode, maybe I was doing something. Or you have to be at a certain distance. I'm not really sure why. But Apple's video did show that when they did the uh, rack focusing, it was done quite smooth and automatically. But you can also actually tap and choose which person to focus on. So that is something that you could do it in post-processing. Post-editing, you can simply just uh, choose and tap which uh, focus you want to be on. You can say in this video now, I'm, I play it and I decide to put Seth as the focus. You, you'll be able to switch to Seth. And also I can change the amount of um, the aperture size, the amount of bokeh in the background or the blur in the background. I can put it down to even more blurry, but of course it will become even more artificial by leaving it at 2.8. Or if I so wish that I don't wish to have that um, blurry effect, I just bring it back up to f16 and it will change accordingly. So that's the useful part if you decide to post process and you want to change the focus of attention on somebody else, you can do that in post. The automatic situation doesn't seem to work that well, but you have the option to tap on the person that you want to choose or rack focus on too. So I think that is very useful and it's something that uh, you can do it while you're doing or even doing post. So it gives you a lot of uh, um, leeway. If let's say you were filming something and you decide that something was done wrong and you want to do it later, well, that's certainly a key aspect of what the cinematic mode can do for you. One really cool feature of the iPhone 13 Pro that has over the iPhone 13 is the macro videography or macro photography mode. So as the name mentions, it allows you to shoot um, macro photos using its ultra wide camera and even the videos as well. So an example of the videos is that as you start shooting the uh, video in let's say the normal video mode and let me switch to 4K mode and as we zoom towards the focus in question you switch to another camera system most likely the ultra wide camera and then you'll be able to take up really close up videos of the image that you want or the object of uh, attention or interest that you want and it really allows you to really zoom into the details and that is macro videography for you and if you want to do macro photography same thing applies you just need to go towards the object in question 
and it automatically switch to the ultra wide camera and then allows you to go in really close and you can take photos like that and it gives you a very cool looking macro photo and of course lastly for pro users if you want to shoot in pro res mode only the 13 pro can do that so the iphone 13 will not have that feature and the pro res mode anyway is coming down uh, coming up probably at the later end of the year so it really depends on you so do you find that 350 dollars is it worth it to pay more for the added features like uh, ProMotion display on the 13 Pro which is 120Hz which gives you a lot more smoothness in your screen or do you want that camera that has a telephoto, the ability to do macro photography, macro videography and basically much better in low light performance for both photos and video. If that is the one and you feel that you want to have that then of course go for the 13 Pro but if you just want to have a normal function where the 13 can also do the cinematic mode then of course go for the 13 but if you want to take it up another level then a pro model will be for you so there you have it that's the differences between the 13 and 13 pro you can make the decision yourself to see which one probably suits you more for me definitely i would prefer the uh, iphone 13 pro because it gives me a little bit more functions with the phone i can do macro macro photography macro videography and of course the pro motion display will be a, a new upgrade for me because i'm always uh, used to the ipad post uh, 120 hertz display although i do find that the 60 hertz display are fine as well but yeah i would splurge that 350 dollars more for the iphone 13 pro so i hope you like this video stay tuned for further videos on the ipad mini 6 and the ipad 9th generation of course maybe some things about the differences or should you upgrade from your iphone 12 to your iphone 13 and do you see any benefits from there all right so stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one peace